where should you invest your money? This is a very common question. And in the next few minutes, I am going to break down the pros and cons of both real estate and stock investing and talk to you a little bit about what you should consider before you make the choice to decide to invest in either real estate or stock. For the purposes of this video, let's define real estate investing and stock investing. So that way we know we're talking about the same thing. When I refer to real estate investing, I'm talking about purchasing either a residential or commercial property that you're going to rent out for income. This is not gonna be your personal residence, and so we're solely talking about rental property. When I talk about stocks, I am specifically referring to the US equities market, broadly speaking. So if you're familiar with the stock market, I'm thinking about a total stock market index. I'm not talking about bond investments, cash investments, or really the international equity sector. I'm talking specifically about U.S. stocks. Both of these options, rental properties and U.S. stocks, are great investments, but they both have upside and downside. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what those are, and hopefully that'll help you make a decision that's going to work for your situation. Now, why is this even a question? Well, it's because the real dilemma you have is you have a finite amount of resources. And so if you're going to be allocating a certain amount of savings and investing to a certain asset class, such as real estate or stocks, you probably want to try to pick the best one. But ultimately, as you're about to see, the pros and cons don't just depend on returns or liquidity. There's a whole wide range of things to consider for both types of investments. So let's get started. Let's start with talking about the pros of real estate investing. There are three benefits when it comes to real estate investing. The first large benefit is the immediate rental income or cash flow that you will start to receive upon renting the property. So once you've acquired it and you've also put some tenants in there, you will start receiving cash flow. This is great. This is one of the biggest benefits that people cite when they buy real estate is that they're going to get what they call passive income. You're going to receive income that you haven't really worked for, which we'll talk about in a little bit to see if that's really the case. But at the end of the day, it can be very helpful in retirement to receive income from these rental properties or property um, to help subsidize your lifestyle. The second benefit of real estate investing is the potential for appreciation on the asset itself. What that means is over the period of time owning that piece of real estate, it may go up in value. It may increase in price. So for example, if you buy the property at $200,000 and you rent it out over 20 years and then sell it for $250,000, you not only got to receive the rental income over that 20 year period, but you also had a $50,000 appreciation in the asset value itself. So you can see how valuable that incremental appreciation might be. The third large benefit of real estate investing is the tax benefits you will receive by purchasing a property. Now, why are tax benefits so great? Well, the first thing is you will get to deduct a lot of expenses related to the property, things like property taxes, mortgage interest, and maintenance expenses. And so this might actually increase your profitability on your cash flow of the property. So the tax benefits can be great in maximizing what your income is going to look like when it comes to renting out that property. Now let's talk about some negatives because I'm here to tell you both from personal experience and also working with clients who own real estate over at least a decade that it is not all sunshine and roses. There's a lot of downsides to owning real estate that you should be aware of. The first one and most obvious is the cost of acquiring a piece of property. It's a high cost to get into the investment itself. So you have to think about that in a couple of ways. Number one, the actual purchase price. If you're living particularly in a high cost state or region, the purchase price can be very difficult to get into if you don't have a lot of money to invest. The second piece that is really hurting investors right now is that mortgage rates are historically very high. So in the past, you may have been able to acquire a property that's pretty high cost, but you had a low borrowing rate, so it wasn't so painful. Now it's a little bit more painful. 
And then the final piece about the high cost of real estate is a lot of people underestimate substantially the maintenance costs that are going to be required to maintain the property. So before you acquire a piece of real estate, I just want you to be aware of the upfront costs and potentially the ongoing capital and maintenance costs that might be required to maintain it. The second negative of real estate investing is how illiquid it is, meaning you can't get access to the capital you've put into the property in a quick amount of time. Now, in an investment portfolio, you can. You can sell the stocks, liquidate, and usually receive funds directly to your bank account in three to seven business days, depending on the institution. With real estate, if you need that capital, meaning you have to sell the property, you're going to have to take the time to sell it, which could take months. And there are going to be some pretty hefty transaction costs. And I have found a lot of people don't realize the transaction costs associated with liquidating a property. So it's not as easy as it seems, and it's certainly not a place to invest emergency money. And the third negative to real estate investing is the ongoing maintenance and management that is required for this investment. I know it can be called a passive income investment, but there's nothing passive about having to manage a property and maintain it. So maintenance wise, you wanna make sure you screen your tenants well, because if you have a bad tenant, you can have months of lost income in the source of no rental payments, or you might even have to evict them, which costs a lot of money itself. And then of course there's maintenance. Now we certainly would wanna factor in some regular maintenance, but then there can be major repairs that you don't expect that eat into your income. So think lightly before you take on the idea of having a passive rental income property and that it's just going to go smooth all the time. The maintenance and ongoing management of the people in the property is a huge downside to this type of investment. So we've gone through some benefits and negatives when it comes to real estate investing. So let's do the same with stock investing and do some comparisons to help you decide for your situation what might make sense. The first is liquidity. That is a huge benefit of investing in stocks. You can receive your money pretty quickly if you need it for an emergency or some other reason. Unlike real estate investing, it's not gonna take months and instead you can alert the institution you'd like the money, sell the positions, and eventually transfer the funds directly to your bank account. Now, there can be some penalties and taxes associated with that transaction depending on what type of account it is, but bottom line, if you need the money, you can have access to it pretty quickly, unlike with real estate. The second benefit of investing in stocks instead of real estate is that there is no huge upfront cost. It doesn't require a bunch of capital. And in fact, you can easily open an account at an institution and invest with $50 into an index fund and be diversified. So if you're starting out, this is going to be a huge benefit if you don't have access to a lot of capital or it might take you years to save to purchase a real estate property. Think seriously about maybe going the investment route, at least for now, because there is no requirement for loans. There is no requirement to have a huge down payment and you could literally get started right after finishing this video. And the third benefit of stock investing is that it truly is passive investing. There is no maintenance costs associated with it, and you don't need to manage anything. You pick for the long term what you want to invest in, put the money in the investment, and forget all about it. And so that takes a lot off your plate, as opposed to real estate, where we talked about how much you may have to manage, whether it be your tenants or any maintenance that is required. Now, just like real estate investing, stock investing also has some negatives to it as well. So let's talk about those. The first and probably most common that scares investors is the volatility associated with stock investing. Now, over the long term with stock investing, you're going to make money. If you stay the course and you're invested in stocks, you will make money over decades of time. That being said, in the short term, stock investing certainly has a lot more volatility when it comes to returns. And so if you're checking your portfolio a lot, it can be a lot more nerve wracking. Now, when you buy real estate, it's not like that. A lot of times you buy the piece of property and you start to receive rental income and then you kind of forget about that piece. It's not like the rental income changes from week to week or month to month. So it can feel a little bit more stable to buy into a piece of property as opposed to investing directly in the stock market. The second negative to stock investing is that it's not tangible. You can't see it, feel it, touch it like you can if you were to own a piece of real estate. 
And that can make a huge impact in someone's willingness to invest in something. Now, you can certainly log into the institution where the account is at, and it's certainly in your name and you own it, but there's no tangible aspect to it. And the third negative of stock investing is the lack of control. It's very limited how much you can do to perform better with your investment. You have to rely on the economy and the companies that you're invested in, and you kind of have to just sit back and wait. So if the economy is doing poorly, you have to ignore that and let your portfolio come back. If you own a piece of real estate, however, you have a lot more control and you might be able to make some decisions to maximize your returns. You can control how you maintain the property, if you improve the property, and you can even control the tenants you place in the property. And so with your own efforts, you might be able to improve things. So those are some pros and cons of both investments. But let's talk about a couple more things when it comes to evaluating what you're trying to do with your allocation of resources. The first thing you want to consider are returns. Of course, you are investing because you want to make money. So you want to compare the investment returns with stocks versus real estate. But it's not just about numbers. So for instance, the S&P 500 you could expect to do on average 10% a year. And that's on average. That includes the down years, but it also includes the up years over a period of time. That's pretty good. With a real estate portfolio, though, that can be very different. It ranges really from about 2 to 5%, sometimes higher and sometimes lower, depending on the location. So there's a lot of variability with real estate. But the other thing you want to think about when comparing the returns is not just what the portfolio or the property itself grows each year. But remember, with real estate, you're also going to be collecting rent. So that is a big piece you have to evaluate. You have to think, OK, it may not appreciate at that 10 percent a year like the S&P 500, but it's also generating me rent every month or every year. And so I have to factor that in if it only grows, let's say, 2, 3, 4, or 5% a year instead. So make sure you think about that piece when you're evaluating investment returns. And then the final bigger piece outside of the pros and cons to think about is the volatility and what you may want to be able to handle as an investor. So as I touched on, when it comes to looking at the portfolio of stocks, you are going to be experiencing a lot more volatility over the lifetime of your investment, unlike real estate, which is a little bit more stable. So it kind of goes hand in hand with those returns. Remember, if you're going to have something that returns you 10% a year on average, you're also going to have a little bit more risk, which can lead to more volatility. If, however, you want something a little bit more stable that's generating you potentially some income and grows at a slow and steady pace, that's more of a real estate play where you're going to avoid a little bit of that volatility. So still not sure? I get it. Here are some questions to ask yourself before you go down the stock or the real estate road. The first question you want to ask yourself is how old are you and how much capital do you really have available? If you're young and don't have a lot of capital, then real estate is probably not for you and that's okay. Just start with the stock market. You have some time, you can build a nice little portfolio and maybe later buy a rental property with that portfolio. If you're older and maybe you already have a lot of liquid investments and or you feel you're on track with your goals and you want to look to real estate investing to maybe diversify your portfolio and you have access to capital, that might be a good time to think about becoming a real estate investor. The second question you want to ask yourself is how much experience and knowledge do you have when it comes particularly to the real estate piece? I am here to tell you there's a huge learning curve. So make sure you're ready to take that on if you are going to go down the real estate path. And if you're not, it's a lot simpler and easier to invest in, in equities in the stock market than it is real estate. I'm being honest here. And the final thing you need to ask yourself is what are your real goals? Like what is the lifestyle you're hoping to achieve and how are you going to get there? Are you hoping to have a lot of rental income when you get to retirement and you're going to manage the properties as part of your retirement plan? Or are you hoping to have a lot of liquid assets and maybe travel, not have to worry too much about managing properties? There's a lot of lifestyle factors that might go into evaluating what your true goals are. The other reality is, keep in mind, it's not all or nothing. You can certainly have both a real estate investment portfolio and stock portfolio. And in fact, I would recommend both. Real estate can be a really great hedge to down markets and inflation, and stocks can be a great way to grow your wealth a little bit faster. So there's no right or wrong answer. 
But if you're starting out today, really think about your goals and what time and effort you want to put into this investment and go from there. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and make a comment in the comment section. I always love to hear back from viewers and see what works for them. And if you are interested in financial planning services, my company, Chisholm Financial Planning and Investments, offers a complimentary 30-minute consultation. You can go ahead and click the link in our bio to book. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed and I wish you many happy market returns.